Okay, so we've been through Jeremiah 50, and now we're looking at 51, and we're trying to find characteristics of who is Mystery Babylon. And like I told you last time, I truly believe that Mystery Babylon is North America. But let's go into more of what Jeremiah says, and let's see if we can get a consensus here on, on what people think. So here we go. Chapter 51. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about, against him that... And so let's go into this. And so this is, this is a little bit about the destruction of Mystery Babylon. And so I guess there is a, a great wind, a destroying wind. And so essentially that begins the, the pillage or the destruction of Babylon. And then there's people fanning these flames or, or, or fanning, you know, whatever it is that's happening. They're, they're making it worse for her. Let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigandine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his... So let me stop right there. And again, it's, it's talking, the, the last two, two verses are talking about what's going to happen to the, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, when it is destroyed. And they, they're, they're destroyed. They're left in the streets, right? It looks, it's a very gruesome scene. But then it goes into, For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of Lord of hosts, through their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Now again, this is not talking about modern day Jews. This is talking about the Israel, Yisrael, the Ebri, who are going to be the people that will follow the name of our Father and the people that will be shouting the name of Yahuwah in the future. So these are not them but he's basically given them a message and in this message he says God of the Lord of hosts though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul be not cut off in her iniquity for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance he will render under her a recompense Babylon right out of the gate and it's telling people it's telling if you understand what is being said here there's a good chance you need to start figuring out how to get out of Babylon that's the first thing is understanding who Babylon is and understand that when Babylon is destroyed, it's a complete surprise to everybody. So it's out of nowhere. It just absolutely happens. So when you understand this, he says, Jeremiah says, get out of Babylon. Don't be, don't be cut off because of her sins. It's the Lord's vengeance. He will repay her what she deserves. And from what they can say, what she deserves is bad things. Hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is such there again. That's yet another mystery revealed of who is Mystery Babylon. It says Babylon was the golden cup in the Lord's hand. She made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore they have gone mad. So Babylon is a powerful, powerful place. It controls the world. In every way, shape, and form. And there's, there's the, oftentimes people say, is it the Catholic Church is Babylon or the daughter of Babylon? It doesn't honestly matter. One or the other is. North America is, is most likely Babylon, Mystery Babylon, and, and the Catholic Church is either the daughter or vice versa. But let it be known that what we're talking about here, we're not talking about a Catholic Church. We're not talking about anything. We're talking about a nation that is going to be destroyed. So let's continue on fallen and destroyed howl for her take balm for her pain if so be she may be healed we would have healed babylon but she is not healed forsake her and let us go every one into his own country for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to so lifted up even into this uh, even to the skies so this is a bad thing right so babylon is now destroyed it's suddenly fallen People are like, cry for her. And they're like, if Babylon could have been healed, she would have been healed. Basically, it's over. There's nothing left of Babylon, nothing worth staying. And people are like, let us go to our own country. For essentially, we have made our father angry. It's even up to heaven that we have this kind of stuff go on. And so what we need to do is let's, let's continue on with this. 
the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon, to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwell so essentially what's going to happen here is Babylon is going to be destroyed. Um, there's not going to be anything left of this stuff. And it's what, what it is, is he's talking about um, he, the way he did it, right? He set this up. He, 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 he trapped Babylon. He got the Babylonians into a trap. And then he, he did this intentionally. And, and so these people hate our father. These, the Babylonians hate our father. It is a, a nation that completely has turned to Satanism. It's, it, we're looking for mystery Babylons. We're looking for just a very evil nation. Upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men, as with caterpillar. I gotta stop real quick. So it's in 13 right there. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. And so th we live, I mean, if you look at New York, and we have... We have, uh, you know, a, a, an idol sitting out inside the, the New York Harbor, right? Uh, the Statue of Liberty is not the Statue of Liberty. That's the Statue of Isis. And so we have, it, America is abundant, right? America was a beautiful land. We, before we polluted it with chemtrails and, and radiating our own water and, and destroying everything that we had, it was a beautiful land. Right now, we're dying. We're dying on it. You know, all these people are like Flint, Michigan. People are dying there. The water's polluted everywhere from West Coast to the East Coast. They've, they've destroyed California. It's just, it's a mess. North America, America is a mess. And so what he's talking about, he's like, you, you've had great times. You've had, you, these are the people who are getting owned are the people that have had good times to this point. And they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings. All right, I just got to touch on this point because he says, when he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. Now, People who are round earthers, and I, and I get this, I, I understand the indoctrination, I was indoctrinated as well, but when we're always talking about the Bible, it is always talking about something that is flat, stationary, it doesn't move, it's peaceful, it's the step stool of our Father, it's just a, it's a, it's something that we can see like this. So again, where he's talking about multitude of waters in the heavens, um, essentially when the floods of Noah came, all the waters of the heavens came flying down on us above us why do you you know why why is why is the sky blue you know is there water above us i don't know but uh, here again it it alludes to something more than what we're actually seeing so let's continue on with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures every man is brutish by his knowledge every founder is confounded by the graven image for his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them they are vanity the work of errors in the time of their visitation they shall perish the portion of jacob is not like them for he is the former of all things and israel is the rod of his inheritance the lord of hosts is his name and we're not talking again Israel of today. Israel, Israel of today are very bad people doing very bad things. They don't bleed out of as many uh, babies as North America does, but the abortion is is prominent. It's it's an everyday thing. They are bleeding their babies to Moloch just like North America. And so when he's talking about Israel here, this is not today's Israel. We're talking about the new school Israel, the new school Israelites that are coming after all this is over. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break 
break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Now, if you want to look at some evil people, if you look at the Jews of today and what they have done to the land of Israel and the abominations that they bring daily into this, so essentially Babylon has something to do with this. And if you look at the modern state of Israel, you know, who controls who? Is Israel control the United States or does the United States control Israel? Either one, they're buddy buddy and they're all in on this together. But the people, the, the Babylonians have really angered our father, Yahuwah, God. And so what he's saying here is that basically prior to this, he's saying every one of you guys are going to be used to cut all these bad people down. We're going to finish them. Then we're going to kill them all. That's the way it's going to be. And he's like, it's because the evil they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a... Whatever happens to Babylon is a bad thing. Nobody wants anything to do with Babylon. It's a cursed place. And so, essentially, when, they, when people see what befalls Babylon... In, in the end days, nobody wants anything to do with her because they're scared it's going to happen to them. And probably rightfully so, because it is a bad, bad thing that happens to Babylon. Standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, Ashkenaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars, prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. So there we go again. So Babylon is such an evil place. It's never to be inhabited again. It's to be utterly, completely destroyed. Worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Like there's still pieces of Sodom and Gomorrah. They're, they, they're, they're talking just complete, utter desolation of this. And so it's not going to be good for Babylon at all. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holes. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to shew the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come Nebuch so again it's not good basically i mean it's babylon gets destroyed i don't think this is a one-step thing i don't think the wind is going to come destroy it i think there's a whole bunch of horrible things that come and destabilize and de basically destroy babylon altogether it's not a, a one thing it's just a, it's a it's a lot of things that are coming it's going to be taken it's going to destroy a lot Rezer, the king of Babylon hath devoured me, he hath crushed me, he hath made me an empty vessel, he hath swallowed me up like a dragon, he hath filled his belly with my delicates, he hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitant of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry, and Babylon shall become heaps of dwelling place for dragons an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant so this is getting into some good stuff right here so babylon shall become heaps a dwelling place for dragons what does that mean uh, in in the niv it says it's it's a heap of ruins a haunt of jackals an object of horror a scorn a place where no one lives can you imagine north america looking like this what has to take place for north america to look like this and remember it's got to be sudden. It can't be something you can't raise. You can't tell North Americans you're going to wipe them out. They would come and destroy you first. This is why it's such a scary thing is because this is done and nobody knows what happens till it's all over. 
shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions' whelps. In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he-goats. How is she shock taken? And how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea has come... So again it's like the, it's talking about the surprise is coming it's talking about what is going to happen and again you're not going to take north america the most armed country in the world for with without some kind of sneaky surprise that they weren't ready for an emp or or something that basically essentially destabilizes them enough to let them get completely owned so there, there's bad things that are coming and again, it's like how how is it going to be owned? It's the and it was the boast of the of the whole earth has been seized. Who is the boast? Who boasts across this earth? Who is the the man when it comes to nations and things out there? North America used to be the man back when they were helping people, and I don't even know if they've ever helped people. I think there's always been agendas out there. So anyway, let's continue on upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up, and the nation shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon... That's very interesting right there. Any more unto him, the nation shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Now you look at the wall of Babylon. What are we putting up right now with Trump? What are, what are we putting? What are we putting up? The, the the ultimate wall, right? Is this wall going to go up right just to fall down? So you're looking. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, a wilderness, a land no man dwelleth. Neither doth any son or man pass by. People don't come by this. And it used to be that all the streams. It says the nations will no longer stream to him. Where does all the commerce of the world live? Where does all everything come into it? It all comes from China over to North America. Then North America is the world's marketplace. That's that's where this becomes. Everyone goes, whoa, what just happened here? One shall fall, my people. Go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. Again, my people, go out of the midst of her. Come out of her, my people. Run for your lives. Run from the fierce anger of the Lord. Now, if you guys understand what I'm saying here, this is talking to you. This is talking to my brothers and sisters who are in Babylon. And I left Babylon years ago, and it was the greatest thing I ever did. I left it on faith. I basically shut down everything, took off, and we've been blessed. We've been truly blessed. So when you guys are like, I can't leave it, I can't get out of here, I can't do this, I've done this, and I was blessed by doing this, and I'm sitting here calling to you guys and letting you guys know bad things are coming, and I want you guys to know this, and if you can hear the sound of my voice and, and the, the passion in this voice, understand that I am, I'm worried for you guys. Come out of her, my people. Run for your lives. Run from the fierce anger of the Lord. We've been warned many times. We're still being warned day after day. And this is a warning again. And lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence of the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caught... So so as everybody as Babylon is being destroyed there. So again, let's go up to 47 and it says I have the graven images. I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon. If you look at all the look at what we have in the United States, the, the Church of Satan and all the, the, the after school Satan programs. Everything has been now devoted to Satan. If you look at Hollywood, it's a bunch of Jewish mysticism. And if you sit there and watch Disney, if you watch this Hollywood, you're being put under a spell. You're being put under the spell of the Babylonians. And so that's what you have to understand is Babylon, the United States, is truly the hammer, the crusher, the controller, the being that controls the entire world. So let's continue on. 
perhaps the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach, shame hath covered our faces. For strangers are come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. Because the Lord has spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice. When her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered, because the spoiler has come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken, for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite, and I will make drunk her princes, and her wise men, her captains, and her rulers, and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Okay, Plus, so let's look at that real quick, because if you look at all the, all the, soldiers and captains and, and people who are with authority this is what he's talking about i will make drunk her princes and her wise men her captains her rulers and her mighty men and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake saith the king whose name is the host so let's look at this right here that is very important because people aren't when, when babylon is destroyed people do stupid things if you're drunk and he makes you drunk you're doing stupid things which is all part of the trap where babylon will fall because of this if the lord of hosts the broad walls of babylon shall be utterly broken and her high gates shall be burned with fire and the people shall labor in vain and the folk in the fire and they shall be weary the word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And this Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. So, there we go. And that takes us to the end of Jeremiah 51. Now, I'll be getting into more of Babylon's characteristics mystery babylon's characteristics and what is it's going to be but if you can kind of see the babylon is the hammer of the entire world it is what the entire world has to come against and if you can imagine what a world without the united states would be like it could very well be a peaceful world the united states has only been at peace for about 10 to 15 years of its entire 200 plus year existence and so let's take a look in the next following uh, segments and see where it is with this. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you guys are enjoying this lesson. Take care.